Hey, what's good everybody? Welcome back to another video. Bitwig released their new beta under Bitwig 3.2, which is pretty awesome, and they've updated some new MIDI features, so I've actually gone and re-recorded this video before as the previous version was under 3.1. So before we get started, just kind of want to let you guys know that we're going to be talking about all of the MIDI effects on here. We're not going to be going too deep into them. I kind of just want to show you each device and give you a brief description, otherwise this video is going to end up being hours and hours long. But let's go ahead and get started. So as the 3.2 update the arpeggiator has received a major overhaul and I'm actually pretty happy about it because that was one of the things that I was actually kind of criticizing Bitwig over as the previous arpeggiator was a little bit too simple but within this one it kind of still functions as your standard arpeggiator where you place this before a VST or some kind of MIDI playable effect and over here you can kind of change the notes and you know kind of play along your standard features as usual. You can also change the velocity of each of these, and I think this is like the maximum velocity that you can set it to, so you can kind of do some stuff on that nature. And it also has a gate length that you can mess around with as well. There's a retrigger function, but the big thing that you can do now that compared to the old one is that you actually have a, I guess, time rate as opposed to actually setting it to a beat grid. And you also have some new functionality over here as well to where you can humanize the swing. And there's also some new playback features as well, such as blossom up, blossom down, high up and high down. So there's a lot more things that you can get lost in with this now. And primarily, honestly, I use an arpeggiator for doing like drum things and then resampling. So this is really helpful to me. But yeah, it's it's. I'm really glad that they took the time to kind of put some improvement into that. The next one that we have is a chain. I kind of talked about that in the regular effects. It works in the exact same way. The channel filter is kind of confusing, but it's not really something that most people would use unless if you have like a ton of keyboards or a ton of MIDI input devices to where you can kind of just separate this into different channels or kind of make sure that this the signals being sent are only going through specific routing. So unless if you get really deep into that, that's not really something I think you would find useful. And same thing with the channel map where you can kind of like do multiple routings with different channels and kind of send MIDI to different places. And let's say you wanted to receive MIDI from multiple sources and send it all to one channel. You can do that with this. But again, it's not really something that I would use myself as I don't use. I have a Rolly Seaboard and I never use it, so that's about it. The Diatonic Transposer is pretty awesome because it gives us a full range of key lists along with some specific modes. And you can kind of filter notes or constrain them. And basically that means that if you play a wrong note, then it will automatically play a note that is closest to the next note in key, whereas the constrain will mean that if you play the wrong note, it just won't, it just won't play. So you can also do some shifting with it, but it's it's really awesome for you to kind of learn how scales go, especially when you combine that with an arpeggiator and such. And so that's something that I, I really enjoy using if I ever feel stuck into melodies. The micro pitch is really interesting because that's kind of self-explanatory in that way. It's not really meant to pitch something an entire octave, but within different cultures and stuff, we have like microtones that go beyond our 12 range, our 12 note octaves and stuff. And so basically with this, you can set these different pitches to do different things. So for example, if I turn this off, and then if I turn this on, and right now I'm playing an F, but I can change the micro pitch or the micro tuning of F3 to kind of play something that's a little bit off. And so if you have a micro pitch on something and you want to add a little bit of flair, a little bit of just like off tuning, this is also really great for lo-fi and stuff. You can kind of play all these different notes and micro pitch them in their own way. And you can also use this in a mean of there's a bunch of different presets that you can feel, kind of work your way through that are also pretty awesome so I, I encourage you to kind of give yourself a chance to go through all those the MIDI CC is just a MIDI CC mapper so if you want to basically map something to any of these macros then you can kind of set up whatever macro you want uh, to the according CC. This will basically control all of those values provided that they're available. So these under here are your basic default ones. CC1 is always the mod wheel, so you can kind of mess with that if there is a preset or a functionality that is corresponding to the VST. So the MIDI program change is perfect for instruments like Silent to where it has certain presets held within a specific bank and I'm not really quite sure how that works as far as what goes on under the hood but I know that this is definitely compatible with Silent but basically you have different programs that set up as different presets that kind of fit in within a bank and with the MIDI program change you can use this to change presets on the fly. So if I kind of play this and I start to turn the program 
you can see that this will start to change. And one cool thing about it is that you can actually automate this with different modulators and stuff. So if you're trying to set something to record and just bounce out like a chord that's a bunch of different presets, this is a great way to kind of shop through some of that and create some neat variation. So the MIDI song select is one of these like odd things that I'm not really too sure about. But what I'm guessing is it's kind of going to draw from the same idea of having a MIDI launcher of some sort. And basically you can take the MIDI song select of that to launch the MIDI that that is within the specific program itself. If we go into the show help, then basically this sends song select messages. And yeah, so basically I think that this is a means of some kind of MIDI trigger within some kind of MIDI bank that you can use. That's it's not really something that I would particularly use, but if you have something like, you know, a bunch of different songs that are in MIDI or you have different, I guess a MIDI bank of some sort that you want to try to send through a synth, then this would be probably something that would be right for you. So the multi note is, basically a chord you can set all of these values to play as complex of a chord up to up to eight different notes as you turn each one on you basically set the pitch and this creates a tonal or it creates a full chord so the diatonic transposer is a great addition that you can use along with the multi-note. You can pretty much set this to play alongside with whatever, I guess, mode and key scale that you want. And so basically you would set up your chord and then throw on the diatonic transposer and it would filter out the corresponding notes that it needs to be. The note delay is kind of like a regular delay, except it does it with MIDI. So it has a delay offset and then it has a specific time mode that you can set. So if I wanted to turn that up and kind of I hit the note and it's actually waiting 1.39 seconds for the note to actually trigger and the delay doesn't repeat but it will set set this to actually play off and so if you wanted something to play in time but offset then this would be something that you can use to kind of generate either some kind of artificial swing or just some actually kind of delay it's like a track delay but with MIDI in some cases or another except you can't push it early you can only push it late so the note echo is actually really cool it's actually okay so we talked about like a note delay but we're just only speaking in terms of time whereas the note echo is actually like a audio effect delay it's where this will actually repeat in a certain way so if I hit this note it will actually repeat the MIDI into a sense and there's a lot of different functions that you can perform with that and then if something is like going haywire you can always just go to stop now. If you're playing a chord and you want only one to play at a time then you can set that to mono and that's one thing that you can do to kind of like mess around with it. You can set the time of repetitions, you can set some randomization and some gating if you want along with playing with the velocity and the pitch if you like, but this is definitely something that could be fun to get lost in. So the note filter is kind of self-explanatory. You basically are filtering out the key range that you're allowed to play on a specific key range. Right now it's set from a full range, but if I wanted to limit the notes that I could play, then I can pull like a C minus two all the way down to like a C six. So anything above that is not going to trigger, and then you can also set a velocity range through that. So I wouldn't really use this more so for a key range, but if I wanted to play a specific velocity range, then you can do that, although there's another MIDI effect that we'll talk about here in a second that I think does this a little bit better. The note effects layer is kind of self-explanatory. You can kind of just stack different notes on here that will all kind of play at once. So you know, if you want like a bunch of different things that's all going to send a bunch of MIDI data through a single synth, then you can kind of use that. It's the same thing as like an effect effects layer just with the notes, but the note effect selector actually has some new functionality that seems to be pretty interesting. So if you have something that's like a diatonic transposer and you duplicate that a couple times and just have like different keys or whatever, and basically what this can do is select between these, right? So with the new effect selector, all you have to do is select the actual device itself right here and you have these new modes that you can pick between to have different voicings or different transitions between each note that or each effect that you can select. So right now it's on manual and that means that I have to place between these two but if I go and click on some of these then we have some different things that we can do as well. So we have round robins where it will kind of play over time during a new note. We have the free voice random key switches which is kind of cool that you can set to keys on your MIDI keyboard that you can play between which is really awesome because before you didn't really have a way that you could switch between without actually clicking on the thing and 
it's kind of nice that thing. I guess you can use like a selector or something as a modulator, but it's a little bit easier now. But yeah, this is definitely something to get into, especially if you're doing like different key changes or something. And I encourage you guys to experiment with that. So the note harmonizer kind of does just that. It will take an incoming key and when you set something to it, it will basically harmonize with whatever key is playing. So if I play an F, it will harmonize with F. And if I, you know, if I play something else with that, then it will kind of play it. But basically what it's doing is it's taking the input of another signal and whenever this is triggered or whenever this note's triggered, it will also play the corresponding note. And you can set it to different notes as well, but that's kind of just what it is in a nutshell. So a note latch is also kind of self-explanatory in the means of whenever you play something, it will kind of latch on and hold the note length. And unless if you say kill it. So if I were to play this as of now, I'm not holding anything and it won't stop until I actually hit kill. So there's different modes that you can select that to. Uh, this would be really excellent if you're trying to do drones or do long automation over time. But to be honest, like you could just set this to play and repeat if you're trying to do that instead. So I don't really know the significance behind that, but that's just because it doesn't line up with my workflow. You might have something that's useful for yourself within this thing. The note length is kind of just a way to change the note length of whatever it is that you're playing. So if I wanted this to be longer or extended, or if I wanted to shorten it rather, because right now I'm holding down F and it's only playing at basically one eighth or two sixteenths. But if I wanted this to be longer, even though I've briefly pressed F, it's now extending the note, kind of like the note latch in a sense. So that's kind of what that does as well. Some of these effects are really interesting and I don't necessarily know the significance of it, but what I can say is that if you kind of combine all of these in such a way, then I bet that you can get some really cool like voicing for some melodic content. And for the most part, like that's really what this is, just different customizations that you can do to make, you know, one note sound different than just playing it in your DAW. How useful that is to you is something to be, you know, is something to be considered, but that's, you know, that's kind of what most of these things do. So the note pitch shifter is exactly what it is. If I, again, play F, cause we all like F and I hit this to one octave up, it's going to play one octave and then it can also go back in and change the semitones and also dial in the fine tuning. The note receiver is basically a MIDI trigger so if you use something like gatekeeper and you want MIDI to be kind of followed in or if you're used to doing MIDI effects like Ableton or different dots where you have to create a separate MIDI channel you can use this. Basically I've kind of changed the way that I do things now but if I wanted to set a side chain to this I could draw in something like gatekeeper on here and then I can send I can grab some kind of drum machine or something and I don't even need to have anything on here. I can literally just create some MIDI simple pattern like that. And now what I can do is on the source, I can set it to the drum machine. So now it's sending MIDI into the polysynth. So if I were to turn this on, of course, like if you want this to trigger a VST or something, you can do that. But if I wanted to set my side chain up, then you can see that it's taking the input signal of the note receiver and basically sending it into the gatekeeper in order to do side chaining. So that's uh, super useful if you like doing that kind of stuff. But with Bitwig, it's actually really cool. Like it would work in an instance like this where you need to have something MIDI triggered. But one cool thing about it that you might not know is that as opposed to having to do that with actual MIDI effects that like something like Cthulhu or something, you can actually just throw it on at the beginning of the chain because it will send MIDI through the entire signal. So if I go onto here onto instruments, I think I misspelled that. I did, I always misspell that. Normally you would have to have a MIDI trigger kind of fire through this in order for this to work. But because MIDI again goes through the whole entire thing, I can just turn that off and play pretty much anything on here. <laughs> And I don't have to make any changes to it, so it makes it a lot easier to use these kinds of things. That's like super cool if you really like doing melodic things. Thanks, Bitwig. As I kind of mentioned before, we have our note velocity, and this is kind of how you can add some humanizations to the velocity patterns that you normally use. So if you have some really awesome chords or an arpeggiator or something and you want to spice that up, then you can activate the random function. And then right here you have a low velocity, mid velocity, and high velocity that you can kind of select in between. And it's cool too because you can also kind of use this if you want. That will kind of change the parameters on that. You can kind of dictate where the median is of the middle, which is kind of like saying the same thing of this is the mid velocity. The mid velocity will always be right here. If I strike my note at 
at that specific velocity but typically speaking i generally set this to be somewhat here and then kind of throw on some randomization so that way it sounds a little bit more humanized finally we have our transposition map basically it's similar to the scale function but what you can do is pretty much set this here and then you can kind of dictate what notes you're going to allow yourself to be played and it goes this it goes across and then down and then you can also set it to shift and you can also set this to either up and down or you can kind of like set the octaves as well but basically if you wanted to kind of move something and create your own scales with this then you can kind of select what notes that you can play one thing that I would appreciate with this is if I was playing the corresponding note I would actually like this to light up because right now it doesn't really tell me what it is that I'm doing even though there is this visual representation. So yeah, that about wraps it up for the MIDI effects. There are just a couple of those changes in the new Bitwig update of 3.2, but nothing that's quite groundbreaking. I encourage you guys to go play with the new arpeggiator and the new note effect selector, and I would also advise you guys to go check out Polarity. He's been uploading a lot of stuff on the new Bitwig 3.2 update regarding some of this stuff. I tend to work in audio more, so as I understand what these things are and know how to use them to some degree, I'm always wanting you guys to be exposed to more information. If you guys like the video, then I'd appreciate a subscription and all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.